My name is Matthew Stevenson and this is a little video for the project I'm currently working on um, which is getting paddle shift working for an early L322 Range Rover. Uh, I've got one of the BMW era Range Rovers uh, with the 4.4 V8 and uh, it's a 2003 model uh, and I want to get the paddle shift working. Now I've got the paddle shifts, um, these have come from a uh, from the 2010 or 2011 Range Rover. Um, these have been supplied by Powerfall UK. As a kit, there's one, and there's the other. And for this one, this one's in bits at the minute because I've removed. Uh, in there, you can see this one is still together. Uh, the canvas canvas controller is in there. Um, we bought these. I've been working with a uh, my friend on the forum called Davio. His name's on the website, um, Dave. Um, and we are working on a project on a project to get this working in our Range Rovers. Now, when we we first bought these, we thought they were just um, basic push button open close switches. Uh, and on later inspection, having to get having to get them out of their casing, um, they are CAN bus switches. Um, basically, they work on. Um, from looking at the boards here, they are I'm doing a lot of work with my multimeter. Um, the CAN bus controllers work by uh, reducing volt, uh, sorry, reducing and uh, adding resistance. And that's what these wires are here. You see, you've got your positive 12 volt, your ground, and your CAN bus. Now, the only difference, um, the only thing I can see, um, changes that are happening on this cable are the resistance. Uh, when there's no, when obviously when the switch is not being pressed, the resistance is um, very low. When you press it, the resistance is very high. So, and that's basically um, because of the resistors that are on the board. <coughs> now, uh, on my, my other project, um, the car PC project, people, are, if you're following it, you'll know about it. Um, we talked about the LEDs that are in here behind all the buttons and it's the same LEDs that are on the um, controller here let's take this carrier um, that little LED there the little white thing at the top there um, now basically that LED um, directly can only sport um, about between 1.5 and 3 volts directly now um, obviously the car runs on 12 volts and I can confirm that the LEDs in the paddle shift support 12 volts indirectly which means as long as you supply 12 volts down the red wire and obviously ground down the black wire there are two resistors there's one that a black one there and there is a resistor just there the black one there uh, and they reduce the voltage to uh, a lower enough um, Capacitor that doesn't basically blow the resistor, uh, sorry, blow the LED. So I've had it running, um, I'll power it up a minute, I'll show you the LED running off a 12 volt battery um, with no problems at all. Okay, I'll just get the battery and I'll show you. Okay, here's my um, test 12 volt battery. I've got a 9 volt plus two 1.5 volts, so that's, that's 12 volts. I'm just going to show you and test it. You'll see on the multimeter 12 volts. There you go, 12 volts. So um, that is definitely 12 volts. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to um, connect up the paddle shift. There it is, to the um, supply. Okay, uh, I've got the negative um, on the negative side of the battery and this is the positive. Go on the positive side of the battery and you'll see the LED light. There you go. It's juttering because I've got a rubbish connection on the positive. There you go, it's nice and steady now. So that's 12 volts going th uh, into the board um, and with the LED working. Okay, now uh, the reason I've created this video is, is not just to show the um, LED working on a paddle shift at 12 volts, 
Um, the reason I've, I've created this video is because I am. Um, on a couple of forums, I've read about people fitting the paddle shifts, and on one particular forum, I think it's a discovery forum, um, with these exact same paddle shifts, um, the person who did that modification uh, modified these by adding extra wires, basically, to um, each side of the button. Now, um, with my com my uh, modification, you don't need to do that. You don't need to add any more wires to the board. Um, Everything is, is, is done through the three wires that are on are on the board already, and the reason for that is, um, basically, you need to remove two resistors, and you can see that I removed them um, there. Okay, yep, the two resistors. One was there, where you can see that's those bits of solder there, and the other one was there where the other bit of solder is. Okay. And the resistors um, with a bit that control that did the CAN bus resistance. Now the blue wire, if you can, um, this blue wire here, yep, goes follows this track here, okay, there, which is obviously goes through this this here where I've soldered. Now everything else here, all this big stuff here, all this is ground, and the only positive bit is the bit that powers the LED. The red wire only powers the LED um, and ground, obviously. The red wire does nothing for us for the pal shift. Now, what I've done, I've removed the two resistors. The top one, as you can see, has completely gone. And the bottom one, I've removed it and I've created a bridge with solder. Okay? So, literally, I've just used a soldering iron, heated it up, removed the two um resistors and put a blob of solder between the two points on the blue connection. So this one here. Um, and that is what, what, what that is how we turn this uh, CAN bus button into a normal open and close um, momentary switch button. So all that's left to do is to fit this into the car. Connect your red to the battery obviously. Connect your black to the um, ground and the blue wire, or on the other side, it's actually a grey wire to um, the connection from the gearbox. And I'll create another video showing you uh, how to get up through the steering wheel. Now, with my steering wheel, because I've got the heated steering wheel option, I've got no spare cables going through the rotary coupler or the slip ring, as people call it. Um, so that's going to be an extra challenge for me because I want to keep both. I want the heated steering wheel and I want the paddle shift. So I've got to get a wire through the um, rotary coupler without obviously getting all tangled up when you turn the steering wheel. So once I've managed and worked that out, I will create another video and um, show you the rest of this project. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.